Shalom, brothers and sisters and family. Shalom. Welcome to another Sabbath day. I'd like to give a shout out to my 25,846 Facebook followers and also my YouTube subscribers. Greetings. Shalom, Israel. This includes you so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. Those of the diaspora dispersed throughout Africa, India, Europe, Asia, and the islands. Those of the sub-Saharan and the transatlantic slave trade. Our topic today is Prophets of Israel 12, Jeremiah Part 2. We are continuing with Jeremiah the prophet. The Most High began with a question to our forefathers. What iniquity have you found in me? That's Jeremiah 2 and 5. I'm just going over what we went over already, rehashing a little bit of it. He then brought the laws of when a man divorced his wife, and she marries another. If she divorces her present husband, she cannot remarry her first husband. This is an abomination according to Deuteronomy 24, 1 through 4. However, the Most High said that he is willing to take us back because he is married to us. Jeremiah 3 and 14. The Most High told our forefathers, if they repent, don't oppress the fatherless, strangers, widows, don't shed innocent blood, then they should be allowed to live peacefully in the land. That is still the request that Most High God has always wanted with his children. We are in our communities oppressing the fatherless, the widows, the strangers, and shedding innocent blood. All this innocent blood being shed in our community today. So we have not changed our ways yet. However, the most high witness the idolatrous acts. Jeremiah 7, 17 through 19. The most high gave the Jews a chance to repent. Now he has told Jeremiah the prophet not to marry any of the women, nor have sons and daughters, for all the inhabitants will be destroyed. Jeremiah 16, 2 through 6. He is taking his loving kindness, he is taking his peace, and he is taking his mercy away from the Jews. And he has done that today. We're going to continue. The sins of Judah is written, recorded in heaven. Jeremiah 17 and 1. The sin of Judah is written with a pen of iron. Pen of what? With a pen of iron. Okay. With the point of a diamond. What is he trying to tell you right here? A pen of iron and a point of a diamond. If you had a pen of iron and, and with a, a diamond point and you write something down, what do you think, Dominic? An iron pen with a diamond point. Like it's never gonna go away. It's gonna leave a big a mark that's never going away. All right, come on. Point of a diamond. It is graven upon the table of their heart and upon the horns of your altars. If you're writing with an iron pen with a diamond point, whatever is written is never forgotten, because it will leave an everlasting mark. Let's continue, verse two. Whilst their children remember their altars and their groves by the green trees upon the high hills. We so-called blacks, Hispanic, and Native Americans dispersed throughout all the lands, a product of the sub-Saharan and transatlantic slave trade, are the children that should be remembering the sins of our forefathers. However, our captives took our minds from us. Let's continue on verse 3. On oh, my mountain in the field. I will give thy substance and all thy treasures to the spoil, and thy high places for sin throughout all thy borders. The Most High gave our riches away for a spoil 
for our enemies, who he sent against us because of our sin. Let's get that. Let's get that proof. Joel one and three. Dominic, read that. Tell ye your children of it. Tell your children, tell their children, and their children another generation. Record this for the time to come and a future generation that will happen to your children. Come to you on verse four. That Dominic. which the power word has left hath the locust eaten, and that which the locust hath left hath the caker room eaten, and that which the caker room hath left hath the caterpillar eaten. So these this this precept is representing all the captivities that we have been through, and every time these captives capture us, they eat eat of us, our, all of our possessions. So, whatever the canker worm let leaves, the caterpillar, what, what did he say? Whatever the palmer worm had left, the locusts eat. So, when, when the uh, Babylonians came, they took all our stuff, cleaned our temple out. That which the Babylonians leave, the Persian Medes shall consume. That which Persian media leave, the Greeks shall consume. That which the Greek leave, the Romans shall consume. Until there is nothing left except the land and our bodies to consume. That's all that's going to be left. They're going to take the land and they're going to use us and they're going to consume us too. And that's what happened. Now take on Jeremiah 17 and 4. And now even thyself shall discontinue from thine heritage that I gave thee. And I will cause thee to serve thine enemies in the land which thou knows not. For ye have kindled a fire in mine anger which shall burn forever. Because of our sins, and the Most High God had not forgive, forgotten them, our abominations caused the entire nation of Israel to lose their heritage. I speak English, but I'm not an Englishman. I didn't come from England. wasn't born there. Latin people speak Spanish, but they're not Spanish. We have lost our language, culture, and knowledge of self due to our confusion of faces. Is, is, is our language part of our heritage? Is language part of heritage? Oh, yes. Food you eat. Yeah. Everything that is us, we have lost. We don't even know the rules of, of, of the foods that we're supposed to eat. We're just eating all kind of dirty ways. And when you tell your people that that food is wrong for them, they still want to be dirty. Jeremiah 17 and 5. Continue. Thus saith the Lord, Cursed be the man that trust that trusteth in the man, and maketh flesh his arm, and whose heart departed from the Lord. We are now trusting in what man say, what men say, as opposed to what the most high God has written. You think cursed be that man. Number two. The Jews have always gotten angry when they hear the truth. Let's get Jeremiah 20 and 1. Now Pasher, the son of Emmer, the priest, who was also chief governor in the house of the Lord, heard that Jeremiah prophesied these things. The main person who was supposed to be teaching the law. He was chief governor in the house of the Lord. So he was very important in the house of the Most High God. He's supposed to be teaching the law. Is the main character that is against the law. The, Lev the Levite priests were the mediators of the old covenant. However, Pastor did not know God. He didn't, he didn't know the Most High God. And he was a priest. All right, continue on, verse 2. Then Pastor smote Jeremiah the prophet and put him in the stocks that were the high gate of Benjamin, which was by the house of the Lord. Okay, what does he say right here? What does he say right here? George, what what you just read? What is what he saying? Uh, you know, put your mind in what's going on. Oh, Jeremiah coming with some stuff that upset upset the uh the kettle. 
He don't boil the kettle over. All the water's on the doggone stove. He coming in with stuff that, oh, these people are prophesying, oh, there ain't nothing going to happen. Just like these preachers around here. You know, all kind of hell could be breaking loose. Oh, God is merciful. He, you know, he's peaceful. He loves you. He, he, he's not going to do nothing to you. And all the time you see that the most high God is, is, is got wrath all against you. So, Pastor Smoke, Jeremiah, what smoke mean? Yeah, he, he went in there and beat him. He, he beat Jeremiah the prophet and did what? And put him in the stocks. What's the stocks? Like a prison? He put him in jail. Why y'all can't answer simple ass questions? Excuse the expression. He, he beat Jeremiah, put him in jail. That was, then he tell you what the location of the jail was. In the high gate of Benjamin, which was by the house of the Lord. So it was near the house of the Most High God. Let's continue on verse 3, Jeremiah 20 and 3. And it came to pass on the morrow that Pasher brought forth Jeremiah out of the stocks and said Jeremiah unto him, the Lord hath not called my name Pasher. I'm going to read that again. The Lord hath not called thy name Pasher, but Mag Magor Misabib. Magor Misabib. Magor Misabib. Terror on every side. Let's get a definition of what that means. The name giver by Jeremiah to Pasher. The priest, when he smote him and put him in the stocks for prophesying against the idolatry of Jerusalem. Okay. Jeremiah told Pastor that his name will be terror on every side. No, your name ain't Pastor no more. Most like God told me your name is Mega Miss Abib, terror on every side. All right, verse 4. Let's see what, why he called him that. For thus saith the Lord. Behold, I will make thee a terror to thyself. That's what it means. I'm gonna make thy friends. I'm gonna make you a terror on every side to yourself, to your friends. Come on. And they shall fall by the sword of their enemies. Wait a minute. To thyself and to all thy friends. Okay, come on. And they shall fall by the sword to, of their enemies. And thine eyes shall behold it. And and I will give all Judah into the hand of the king of Babylon. And he shall carry them captive into Babylon, and shall slay them with the sword. Now I'm going to put you in a situation. You got somebody, a prophet, coming to you, telling you what the Most High God is going to do to you. You ain't got no fear of him. Man, you shut up talking to me with that bull crap because I ain't got time to hear it. Man, smack this fool and side him upside his head. Get in hell by my face. You know, the stuff that some of you people say today. Jeremiah is telling you what the, what the Most High God don't told him. This is what's going to happen to you. You're going to be a terror to yourself. You're going to be a terror to all your friends. The, the king on, the king of Babylon that's coming to get you is going to kill all of y'all. The Most High has a problem with all of you pastors leading his people astray in his name. So this message can still extend further because the Most High God had a problem with Pasha, which was a, a, a leader of the church. And he still got a problem with all of you leaders today that lead your people astray. Verse 5. Moreover, I will deliver all the strength of this city and all the labors thereof and all the precious things thereof and all the treasures of the kings of Judah will I give into the hand of their enemy, which shall spoil them and take them and carry them to Babylon. When the Most High has had enough, he destroys wonderfully. He going to take your labors. So can somebody kind of explain what that means? He going to take your labors. What's labors? It's a product of what? Work. Work is a product of, based upon what you, what you know. So all your skills, you're going to be working for another man. In his country, he's going to take all your labors out of the land. All you're going to be doing is working for him as a slave. And he said, what else? 
Labor, he gonna take all your labor, so he gonna take all y'all, and you'll be working somewhere else for, for, for as a slave somewhere else, like he did when he put us in the transatlantic slave trade, the sub-Saharan slave trade. We weren't working in our land for ourselves. We were working for somebody else. He took out our labors, cause we wouldn't, we wouldn't do it. You know, the, the problem is that the most High God said it once, and, and like I'm saying, it, it, it perpetuates his word don't change. Because he took all our labors. He's taking all our labors now. We ain't working for the building of our nation. We're working for the building of another nation right this day. He took it out. He took our labors. And all the precious things there are. We ain't got nothing precious no more. You know, all these countries don't stole everything from us. And all the treasures of the king of Judah are all given to the hand of their enemies. The king don't, we, we don't even have a king anymore. So all the, all the, Gold, silver, diamonds, the all the precious jewel, jewels. You know, the white man wearing them, the East Indian man wearing them, the Asian man wearing them. Call them they, their own, and they, they got a story behind it. We don't we don't have no more stuff. They took all of it from us, and they should spoil them. We spoiled. We like spoiled milk today because we don't we don't have a heritage. We don't know who we are. Y'all just need to understand, these scriptures still apply to you today. Jeremiah 20 and 6. And now, and now, pastor, and all that dwell in thine house shall go into captivity, and thou shalt come to Babylon, and there thou shalt die, and shalt be buried there, thou and all thy friends, to whom thou hast prophesied lies. I'm sure pastor didn't believe anything that Jeremiah had said concerning him. He was the chief governor in the house of the Most High God, a prestigious position. He hated Jeremiah because Jeremiah was prophesied of things that contradicted his speech. He, that's why he, he beat Jeremiah because he was so full of pride. And Jeremiah came, probably didn't look the best. You know, you know he didn't come in, a, uh, as Christ said, that, you know, he didn't come in smooth garments of the, of the king's house. When Jeremiah came, you know, he came almost like a common man. So, Pastor had no respect for him because, you know, what this nigga was talking about? You know how, how, how you black folk get when, uh, when y'all get a little money and a little position? Y'all got time, y'all have no time to talk to anybody that you think is less than you. Now, now fear comes upon the Jews when they see their enemies. This is now Jeremiah had been telling them what's gonna happen to them. Now they get scared. All right, Jeremiah 21 and 1. The word which came unto Jeremiah from the Lord when King Zedekiah sent unto him Pasha, the son of Melchiah. Now this is a different Pasha. Because the Pasha that smote Jeremiah was uh the son of Emmer. This is another a Pasha, the son of uh Son of uh, Melchiah, come on. The son of Melchiah. And, the, and Zephaniah, the son of Messiah, the, pri the priest, saying. King Zedekiah was king of Judah around 597 BCE when the Babylonians placed the Jews into captivity. Nobody seemed to care about what the Most High God had to say until now. I wonder what changed. Verse 2. Come on. Jeremiah 21 and 2. Inquire, I pray thee, of the Lord for us. For Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, maketh war against us. If so, be that the Lord will deal with us according to all his wondrous works, that he may go up from us. Now, y'all y'all see y'all see this? This is the same way most of you you Negroes today do. Y'all don't think about the most high God until trouble comes. And then, you want to say a prayer to God, oh God, please help. You want to do all of this stuff. And the most like God probably was trying to get you to change the whole time. And you and you be saying to yourself, man, I'm going to change. I need to change. I need to make some changes. But you never do. Now, here's Zedekiah. Jeremiah had already told him that the Most High God is going to send Babylon to them and, and destroy them and kill them and, and drag them into slavery. 
Now they see Nebuchadnezzar, and all of a sudden, they're going to go get Jeremiah out of prison where Pasha had put him. Yeah, go get that fool out of prison now. We need to talk to him. Maybe he can talk to God for us. Okay. Let's see what Jeremiah told him. Jeremiah 21 and 3. And Jeremiah said unto them, Thus shall you say to Zedekiah. I'm going to tell Jer Zedekiah this. I want you to go tell him this. Come on. What do you tell him? 21 and 4. Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, Behold, I will turn back the weapons of war that are in your hand. For if ye fight against the king of Babylon, and against the Chaldean, which besiege you without the walls, and I will assemble them into the midst of the city. Now, that there is very important. Most like, most like God said, I'm going to hold your weapons back. And I'm going to allow them to come into the middle of your city. Don't y'all know how hard it was to get into Jerusalem during this time? They were a city on a hill. So, if you're fighting and marching against them, they had a they had a, a, a very, very strong advantage. They just slapping you down a hill. They, they, I'm telling you, you, you had no chance of beating them on a, on a, on a uh, fair fight. But the most I got is God of everything. So like, I'm going to put them in the middle of the city. And I'm going to show you how he did it. Go tell Zedekiah that the Most High will fight against you. He will hold back your weapons against the king of Babylon and the Chaldeans and allow our enemies to enter into the middle of the city. Let's get Lamentations 2 and 1. Dominic, I want you to read the, uh, these precepts to 4. How the Lord covered the daughter of Zion with the cloud of his anger and cast out from heaven unto the earth the beauty of Israel and remembered not his footstool in the day of his anger. The Most High covered the Jews in a cloud because he he no longer wanted to see us. He gave us a chance to repent, but the Jews would not. Now he is taking vengeance, throwing his children out of rulership and to servitude. That's the, that's the cast down from heaven. We were in heaven because we were on top. We were in rulership. And he threw us down to the earth into slavery, into captivity. Continue on verse 2, Dominic. The Lord has swallowed up all the inhabitants of Jacob, and has got pity, and has got pity. He has thrown down in his wrath the strongholds of the daughter of Judah. He has brought them down to the ground. He has polluted the kingdom and the princes thereof. The Most High has destroyed all twelve tribes of Israel, including, including the northern kingdom. He had already destroyed them before, in the same way he he's going to destroy Judah. Because the northern kingdom, they built cities the same way the southern kingdom built cities, up on hills. So when the Assyrians came against the, the, the northern kingdom, it took them two years to, to get into their city too. Two or, three, two or three years. The Most High destroyed the fifth cities of Judah, where it was almost impervious against attacks. Verse 3. He hath cut off in his fierce anger all the horn of Israel. He hath drawn back his right hand from before the enemy. And he burned against Jacob like a flaming fire, which the devoureth round about. Instead of protecting his children from their enemies, the Most High took his right hand away from our enemies, meaning that he allowed all our enemies to attack us. And he was he was waging war against us. So when he send your enemies against you, when you ain't, when you are not doing as he tell you, he not only sending his enemy, sending your enemies, he's fighting with them. He's on their side because he want the beat down to happen to you. He ain't, he ain't helping you. He's like, mm -mm, no, 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 no. I'm gonna get all the leaders because. He had cut off in his fierce anger all the horn. The horn, what's the, what, what considered the horn? Horn is considered as what? Yeah, the leaders. All the horns, the kings, the, the prince, the priests, all the people that considered in leadership. And I'm going to show you this in Jeremiah. He, he took all the horn and you know what? 
Nebuchadnezzar killed all the horn in Israel when he when he conquered it. We're going to get to that. So they're doing the will of the Father right here. The Most High God was on their side. Got them into the, into the heart of the city, which was impervious to get into. Because when you set the, day, the gates of Jerusalem, you're in a fifth city. You're up in the hills, and you got an angle. To, you got to go up and fight against them. You ain't get. You ain't got no frac, uh, no friction going up in the uh, up in the angle like that. That gate like a hundred feet tall. But by, by the time you are from the from the from where you are on the ground, you you be like, man, forget it. But the most I put them right there in the middle of the city. Okay, verse four. Lamentation two and four. Come on. He has bent his bow like an enemy. He stood with his right hand as an adversary, and he slew all that were pleasant to the eye. In the tabernacle of the daughter of Zion, he poured out his fury like fire. Now, everybody talking about God is love. God is love. Is this love here? Is this is this love? He said he bent his bow like an enemy. If he's your enemy, he ain't showing you no love. He pulled his loving kindness away from you. He ain't, he, he ain't showing you no mercy. No, he took his peace from you. If you don't want to do what he he tells you to do, that's what he does. He takes away his loving kindness. He takes away his mercy, and he takes away his peace. And y'all wonder why y'all getting killed in the communities all day, every day? Cause you got a God angry as hell, and he got and he is using his right hand to to, to destroy you. The Most High fought against us, as he fight against us today. Our forefathers made a covenant with the Most High, and they and there are consequences when we don't keep the covenant. Let's continue on Jeremiah twenty one six. And I will smite the inhabitants of the city, both man and beast. They shall die of a great pestilence. Okay. Our commandments have been suffering. Our communities have been suffering from the crack epidemic and gang violence in mid-80s to the 90s. Also, the AIDS epidemic was going on all at the same time. You could, you could tell who the Most High God's people are due to all of the pestilence that are going on in our communities. My brothers and sisters in other lands, I know you experienced some of the same atrocities. Because, you know, from my knowledge, Jordan, will you please stop kicking the table? From my knowledge, you know, there was an Ebola outbreak in Africa somewhere a couple a few years back. And a lot of a lot of our brothers and sisters over there died. And I guarantee they power our people. Oh, that's a pestilence. Come on, Jeremiah 21 and 7. And afterward, saith the Lord, I will deliver Zedekiah, king of Judah, and his servants, and the people, and such as are left in this, in this city, from the pestilence, from the sword, and from the famine, into the hand of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, and into the hand of, into the hand of their enemies, and into the hand of those that seek their life. And he shall smite them with the edge of their uh, at the edge of the sword. He shall not spare them, neither have pity, nor have mercy. Mm. Now, why is the Most High God so harsh right now? Why is he so harsh right now? The Most High ain't got nothing good to say because the enemy is in front of them. They see him. Y'all get your, book, your Bibles out. Look at Jeremiah 16. I think it's like 5. Let me look at it. Yeah, 16-5. Jeremiah 16-5, anybody there? For thus saith the Lord, enter not into the house of mourning. Don't go into the house when they have a funeral. Don't go in there. 
neither go to lament nor bemoan them. For I have taken my away my peace from this Take, people. Taken away what? Taken away my peace from this people. Okay. Saith the Lord, even loving kindness. I'm and took mercy. my took took away I took it away my loving kindness and mercy. I don't took my peace away from them. I don't took away loving kindness, and I don't took away mercy. Now, in Jeremiah twenty one and seven, this is a God that has taken away his peace. His loving kindness and his mercy. Because nobody wanted to listen to Jeremiah the prophet when he came to him and told and the most I told me, if you if you change your ways, I will allow you to live in this city forever. Nobody wanted to listen to it. But now they see Nebuchadnezzar and his army coming up before them. Now they want it, they now they want it, a word. From the Most High. Read Jeremiah 21 7 again. And afterwards, saith the Lord, I will deliver Zedekiah, king of Judah, and his servants, and the people, and such as are left in the city, in the city from the pestilence, from the sword, and from the famine, to the hand of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, and into the hand of their enemies, and into the hand of them that seek their life. And he shall smite them with the edge of the sword. He shall not spare them, neither have pity, nor have mercy. I took away my mercy, I took away my peace, I took away my loving kindness. So, when Nebuchadnezzar come, he going to kill y'all. He going to drag you into his city, and he, he going to smite you with the sword. That which the disease didn't kill, the Most High would deliver the Jews into the hands of their enemies to be killed by the sword and famine. That which Ebola or AIDS didn't kill, the Most High delivered our sons and daughters to be killed by our enemies and famine. We just don't listen to the voice of our Elohim because he's still doing the same thing to us today. You know, he, do, he doesn't, we don't listen. Those things are still going, he, you know, he takes his loving kindness and his peace and his mercy from us when we're not doing his commandments, and y'all just think it's just coincidental that that 10 people around the block just got killed. That people dying of AIDS every day in the community. That, that women coming up, young girls and, and young women coming up missing in the hood every day. That's a guy who take, has taken away his peace, his mercy, and his loving kindness. You don't give a darn about what happened to you. Especially when you're not doing what he asked you to do. You 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 like him saying you you like saying you you uh, got your shoulders up, man. I don't give a damn what's in that Bible. That Bible was written by a white man. No, the fact is the black man is confused about who he who he is. He walked away from his own records. The white man brought the book to him because the most high God sent it, sent the book with him. Cause he wanted to put it in our hand because well, he, you know. Most High God loves us, but you know the fact is, He gonna give you a way out. But if you don't want the way out, you know what? <laughs> I'm taking away my peace, my mercy, and my loving kindness. I don't give a damn what happened to him. Kill him all. Y'all keep playing that game with your life. If you won't. Jeremiah twenty one and nine. See these things happen before time. But, but the fact is, the most I got God's word go out. It doesn't go out void. His words go out, and he said it then. It's still, it's still in, in play today. Jeremiah 21 and 9. He that abideth in this city shall die by the sword, and by the famine, and by the pestilence. He that goeth out and falleth to the Chaldeans. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I'm, I'm sorry. Start at verse 8. I'm sorry. We jumped ahead. And unto this people thou shalt say, Thus saith the Lord, Behold, I said before you the way of life and the way of death. Okay. Now, mind you now, the Most High God has taken away his loving kindness, his peace, and his mercy. And you're going to see the way of life and the way of death has no mercy in them. So he gave us the way to survive to, to, to survive the Babylonians. I'm giving you a way of life and a way of death. 
in which ne neither one have have peace, loving kindness, or mercy in them. All right, let's get to uh, verse nine, tw Jeremiah twenty one and nine, Jeremiah twenty one and nine. Come on. He that abideth in his city shall die by the sword, and by the famine, and by the pestilence. But he that goeth out and falleth to the Chaldeans that besiege you, he shall live, and his life shall be unto him for a prey. The way of death, if you stay in this city, you will die by the sword, starvation, and disease. Stay in the city if you want. You're dying. They're going to come in here and kill you? You're going to starve to death? Or you're going to get a disease and die? Now, if you want to live, you better go out, this, go, go out of these gates and, and fall on your knees and, and submit to the Chaldeans. Surrender to the Chaldeans and you'll live. There's no peace and mercy in that. They're going to they're gonna take you as a slave and they're going to do what the hell they want to with you. Jeremiah 16 and 5. Come on. Now, I, I've already read, read this. But we can read it again. Jeremiah 16 and 5. For thus saith the Lord, enter not into the house of mourning, neither go to lament nor bemoan them. For I have taken away my peace from his peop from this people, saith the Lord, even loving kindness and mercy. The Most High had no more mercy. He was all out of loving kindness too. No, he out. You know, it's it's like the coverage today because of this uh, coronavirus that they that they uh everybody's afraid of. There's no mercy. No, there's nothing in the coverage. The Most High was out too. He, he like I said, he was out of mercy. He was out of peace, and he was out of loving kindness. And, and the fact is, this is not to everybody. At this time, this was to the Jews, the so-called blacks. Because they didn't want to listen. The most High God gave them an ultimate, hey, if you could, if y'all change our ways, don't oppress the fatherless like we're oppressing the fatherless in the hoods. Don't oppress the widows. Don't oppress people, the strangers, the people coming into your community from other from other cities. Don't oppress the strangers in your hood, in, in the hood. Don't don't shed innocent blood. Don't commit don't commit crimes against your brother and sisters, and you can live in the in the land peacefully. But since we don't want to do that, Most High God takes His peace and His loving kindness away from us, and He has no mercy for us. He is our God now. He is our Elohim. But the fact is. There's no love when you when, when you don't do what he tells you to do. He has no peace for you. He has no loving kindness for you. He has no mercy for you. I just want to let y'all know that. Jeremiah 21 and 10, continue. For I have set my face against the city for evil. For what? For evil and not for good. Oh, that ain't love, is it? Read that again. For I have set my face against this city for evil. I thought that was love. I set my face against this city for love. No, that was like evil. Okay, come on. And not for good, saith the Lord. It shall be given into the hand of the king of Babylon, and he shall burn it with fire. He's going to burn this city down with fire. This is what Jeremiah was telling them when they saw Nebuchadnezzar coming. Oh, I'm going to set my face against y'all for evil and not for good. And this king is going to burn this city down with fire. Okay. Four. The Most High has turned his attention to the prophets and priests who have lied. Now, who have led the Jews astray. Now, because the fact is, somebody is responsible for the wickedness of our people. The way that they're acting. Just because our people were led astray doesn't mean that. They didn't get spanked. The Most High God didn't have uh, uh, was was angry with them, cause Jeremiah came to them just like the 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 the, uh, the disciples are coming to a lot of you people today, and, they, and and you're not listening because you're so programmed in these churches. Dominic, would you please with that water put it down? Don't make that. This is not part of the class. You don't do that in in, in your regular school. Put the water down.
Okay. Let's continue with Jeremiah 23 and 1. Woe well be unto the pastors that destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture, said the Lord. Woe well mean destruction. The Most High is talking to those who are supposed to be teaching and ministering the word, but are leading the Most High God's people astray. That's what that means. Destruction to you people that you're supposed to be teaching your people, not, not trying to drain every penny out of their pocket. You know, you supposed to be paying tithes, not instead of your bills, type of type of pastors. You know, don't who don't give a damn about you, you know, you know, that tithe money, oh, that, that that's for your rent. No, that's tithe. You need to give 10% of that. I'll be damned if I ever give any man 10% of anything of my money because they said the most high God said I supposed to. If 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 you want if you want 10% of my money, prove to me. That it is written by that by the Most High God, and prove to me that it's still uh, uh, still a law this day. You come before me with that, I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna shut you down, I'm gonna, I'm gonna embarrass the hell out of you. Because I'm gonna put these scriptures on you, and like I'm saying, the fact is, you can't run from the truth. Jeremiah 23 and 2, continue on. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God of Israel against the pastors that feed my people. Ye have scattered my flock and driven them away, and have not visited them. Behold, I will visit upon you the evil of your doings, saith the Lord. The Most High God has a problem with you pastors today, scattering his people into all types of religions. You pastors don't teach the law, telling them the laws are done away, and you welcome other nations and their money into your congregation. Let's continue Jeremiah 23 and 9. My heart within me is broken because of the prophets. All my bones shake. I am like a drunken man and like a man whom wine hath overcome because of the Lord and because of the words of his holiness. Jeremiah is heartbroken knowing what the Most High God is about to do to his people because of the lying prophets. You know, he he is he is right now. He's trying to express to you how heartbroken he is, because he know what the Most High God is going to do, and these pastors and prophets are lying to the people, and they believe every word that these pastors and prophets are saying. Just like now, I'm heartbroken today myself because the fact is, it it like I said, it 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 makes your heart, you know, your, your heart. Let me, let's get a precept. Let's get a precept. Let's get Ecclesiastes. Ecclesiastes 1. I think it's like 17. All right. Seventeen, eighteen. One Ecclesiastes 1, 17, 18. And I gave my heart to know wisdom and to know badness and folly. I perceive that this also is vexation of spirit. Once you get into these scriptures and you start understanding the wisdom of this book, and you, you begin to see madness and foolishness, and it vexes you. It can't help you. You can't not help but to be vexed. Because you you're just, you know, the fact is, you know what's wrong, you know what's right. And everybody is believing these lying pastors. And you know that they're marching themselves straight to hell, and it's like a train you can't stop. You know, you you, you got a rope around a, 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 a train, and you're trying to stop it from going down the track and the further into the depths of hell, but you can't pull you can't you can't stop a train by yourself. All right, verse 10, Jeremiah 23 and 10. For the land is full of adulterers, for because of swearing, the land mourneth. The pleasant places of the wilderness are dried up, and their course is evil, and their force is not right. People are cheating on the most high throughout the, throughout the land, everywhere you go. That's just the same way it is here. Verse 11, come on. For both prophet and priest are profane. They what? Profane. 
Yea, in my house have I found their wickedness, saith the Lord. Both the prophet and priest are profaning the multi God's laws and his people. They are in the church today still profaning his people. We are profaned in, in, in these churches. All these people in these churches are profane. They do, they do profane and abominable things throughout the church. Let's get Ezekiel 22, 26. Dominic, read that. Her priest has violated my law and have, <coughs> and have profaned my holy things. They have put no difference between the holy and profane. Neither have they shown difference between the unclean and the clean. They have hid their eyes from my savages. I am profane among them. They have put no difference between the holy and profane. You got black, you got Hebrews and other nations sitting in the same building talking about they worshiping the most high God. Holy and profane. You got people got their heads bald, tattooed up. Preaching the word of God in the pulpit, they profane. Because you don't supposed to be bald in your head as a man. Neither have they shown a difference between the unclean and the clean. They don't know you know what kind of animals to eat. They doing unclean things. You know, sleeping with women on their periods and stuff. Doing all kind of vulnerable, unclean things. They, they, they don't know how to be clean at all. Eat all these unclean animals. They don't put a difference between it because, you know, they, they because they understand, they talking about, you know, well, Peter did kill and eat. Most High God told him, Peter, kill and eat. They didn't even understand what, what the Most High God was telling Peter to do. What, what, what Christ was telling Peter to do. He wasn't telling him to eat no food. He was talking about his brothers that, that, that were considered unclean. And they wanted him to follow uh, the servants of Cornelius when he came. This goes to show that the Jews didn't know that Elohim then, nor do they know him today. They will follow the same wicked pastors, prophets, and priests today. These people are not teaching the will of God, but from their own lustful thoughts. Let's get the will of the Most High God. Let me remind you what the, what the will of the Most High God is and has always been. Psalms 40 and 8. Don't agree with that. I don't like to do thy like will, O my God. Yea, thy laws are through my heart. The, the will of the Most High God is always his laws. He, he's he's not gonna he's not gonna change today because you know they got new technology and all this other stuff. He ain't changing. You know, a pig today is unclean as it was yesterday. I don't care how y'all raise the pig or whatever you do to the pig to try to make it clean. The most like guys say don't eat it, and it ain't gonna change. Let's continue on Jeremiah 23 and 12. Wherefore their way shall be unto them as slippery ways in the darkness. They shall be driven on and fall therein. For I will bring evil upon them, even the year of their visitation, saith the Lord. These wicked pastors seem to be successful, profiting off of their people. They are profiting off of y'all. Because, you know, you only got rent money, but they tell you to pay 10% for tithes. And some of you foolish people do. You know, what's more important than paying your, 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 uh, your doing your responsibility so that you and your family can have a place to stay? The Most High God don't need your money. Matter of fact, he tell you for the love of money is the root of all evil. So your pastor loving money so much that he'll rather take money from you and make you homeless and then when you go ask for help for rent, he can't help you. Because he loves money that much. And he don't give a damn about you.
These wicked pastors seem to be successful profiting off of their people's backs, but their ways shall be like slippery paths in the dark. The Most High will bring evil upon them. You watch. All of these wicked men and women shall fall. All of them. You gonna see, you, like I'm saying, you see them crash. Jeremiah 23, 13. And I have seen folly in the prophets of Samaria. They prophesied in Baal and caused my people Israel to err. The Most High is now talking about the foolishness of the northern kingdom. Northern kingdom prophets who prophesied not by the Most High but by Baal and caused the northern kingdom to err. All of these Christian pastors today are prophesying by Baal. Not, not according to the Most High God. They have a Bible and they use a few unrelated verses for their sermon. This, make them, this makes them false prophets because the fact is they use unrelated scriptures to create a sermon but they're not they're prophesying by Baal because everything that they're talking about now is, is according to their own mind. It, it has nothing to do with, with the will of the Most High God, His laws. Jeremiah 23, and that's why all the people in these churches are so out of order. And they don't know they're out of order because they have never been taught. They go to Sunday school, but you be trying to figure out who, who puzzled them this badly. Because I'm, you know, I'm actually going to put a Sunday school. My Sunday school teaching had zero teaching of the laws at all. And I'm trying to understand what it was that I was learning. By ball. By the devil. Continue on Jeremiah 23, 14. I have seen also in the prophets of Jerusalem in horrible thing. They commit adultery and walk in lies. They strengthen also the hands of evil doers, and none doth return from his wickedness. They are all of them unto me as Sodom, and the inhabitants thereof as Gomorrah. Now this now the most high God is focused on what the prophets in Jerusalem are doing. They cheat on the most high walking in lies, saying the most high said this and the most high said that. When the most high has not spoken to them. They straighten the hands of evildoers like our pastor in the church today. They know the Most High God's laws on homosexuality. They know what the Most High God's laws on homosexuality is. But just in case, let me let me give you the law. Now, Dominic, read Leviticus 18.22. Thou shalt not lie with mankind as of womankind. It is abomination. The pastor today know that the the above precept is in the Bible, but they cancel all the laws out except tithing. They straighten these homosexuals' hands in their congregation, putting them in charge of the ministry of music. Man, I'm going to tell you, almost all Christian, black Christian churches, it, it's like, I'm going to tell you, it, it's almost like 85 or 90 percent of are homosexuals. The ministers of music are all mostly 85 percent of my homosexuals. The Most High considers them all part of fire and brimstone. All right, read Isaiah five thirteen. Therefore, my people are gone into captivity because they have no knowledge, and their honorable men are famished, and their multitudes dried up with thirst. Jeremiah is witnessing the Jews who are about to go into captivity. The honorable men are the prophets and priests who have no knowledge of the Most High God, leading the Jews astray. This is the same identical path our people are taking today. You can teach according to how the Most High tells you to teach, and our people are so accustomed to hearing lies, they will not believe you and become angry with you. Continue on, five, Isaiah 5, 14. Therefore, hell hath marked herself and opened her mouth without measure. Because, wait a minute, hold on. Because our people are gone into captivity, Hell has gotten bigger because they have no knowledge. The honorable men that who's supposed to be teaching them the law are dried up of the law. They don't know the law. And the multitude are dried up with thirst. That They have no knowledge. They're dried up without law. And, and the people are going into hell. Continue uh, Isaiah 5, 14. Start over. Therefore, hell has enlarged herself and opened her mouth without measure. And their glory 
and their multitude, and their pomp, and he that rejoiceth shall descend into it. See, that pompous, them being haughty, them that refuses to answer to the law, they're not gonna. They're not gonna respond to the law. You know, the fact is, if you try to give them, give them the law, they're gonna hate you for it. Just like Pastor put his hands on Jeremiah because Jeremiah came in to uh, came to tell him, "Dust said the Most High God, put him in, beat him up, and then put him in in prison." If if our people could do that to uh, to uh, to uh, a righteous Hebrew today, they would. Your own people would do that. Let's continue on Jeremiah 23 and 15. Therefore, thus saith the Lord of hosts concerning the prophets, Behold, I will feed them with wormwood, and make them drink the water of God. For from the prophets of Jerusalem is profane as gone forth into the land. Let's get what idea what warm, warm, wormwood means. Wormwood, a state or source of bitterness or grief. I'm going I'm to feed y'all with some grief. That's what I'm going to prepare for, for y'all. Give you some grief. And the bitterness of gall. The lying prophets were filled with grief. When the, Babylon, when the Babylonians came, I'm certain they witnessed their families getting slaughtered before their deaths. Before they died, I bet you they witnessed their families getting killed all around them. Because most High God told, uh, uh, told Jeremiah to tell Pasha that his name was uh, some crazy name, but you know it was it was a name of something that's gonna be all around you. Magar, Magar miss a bib, Magar miss a bib. Terror on every side. Let's get us understand what gall is. Gall, bold and impudent behavior. When the Babylonians came, they didn't show the lying prophets any respect that they thought they deserved. We're the prophets of the most I got. I don't give a damn if you're the prophets of the of the golden golden eagle. Get your butt in line. Slap the hell out of them. Jeremiah 23, 16. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, hearken unto the word of the words of the prophets. Read that again. Hearken not unto the words of the prophets that prophesy unto you. They make you vain. They speak a vision of their own heart, and not out of the mouth of the Lord. Don't listen to these lying pastors and prophets. You're living a lie. Their visions are not according to the law. The Most High is the Elohim of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. His laws represent him. He doesn't go outside of himself. That's foolishness. So even today, this stands today. Don't listen to these lying pastors, these lying prophets. Continue on, Jeremiah twenty three seventeen. They say they say still unto them that despise me, the Lord hath said, ye shall have no peace. And they say unto every wait a minute, read that again. Ye shall have peace. And they say unto every one that walketh after the imagination of his own heart. No evil shall come upon you. This is what the pastor said today. This is why we're in the same situation today that we were in yesterday. Because these lying pastors telling the people when danger is coming, what are they telling the people? They saying to them that despise me, that hate my laws, the Lord has said, ye shall have peace. When the most high God is taking his loving kindness, his peace, and his mercy away from you, for not doing it according to his commandments. And they say unto everyone that walketh after the, their imagination of his own heart, no evil shall come upon you. Now, that ain't what the Most High God is about. You don't, you don't do his commandments. He taking away all his loving kindness, his peace, his mercy. He ain't showing no mercy to you. You can, you can, that pastor just going to, just going to send you straight to hell with gasoline draws on and with a match lit in your hand. So keep listening to him. You're going to be in the worst situation. Jeremiah 23 and 20. 
The anger of the Lord shall not return until he hath ex executed, until he hath performed the thoughts of his heart in the latter days. He shall consider it perfectly. The Most High will not stop being angry until he does everything that he has in his mind to do to the prophets and priests. Verse 21. I have not seen these prophets. Wait, what? I have not sent these prophets, yet they ran. I have not spoken to them, yet they prophesied. The Most High has not sent these lying prophets, but they are prophesied every Sunday, which is the wrong day to give the Elohim of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob praise. Jeremiah 23 and 25. I have heard what the prophet said, that prophesy lies in my name, saying I have dreamed, I have dreamed. We still have prophets today claiming that the Most High God gave them a vision, but they are outside of the laws, no beard, fringes, bald heads, wrong diet, etc. They in the pulpit looking defiled and profane as ever, and they saying that the Most High God gave them a vision. Most like God don't even want to talk to you. He can't even look at you. Bald head, no beard. Just don't have a pork chop sandwich, a, a grits, egg, and bacon for breakfast. And, and, and you talking about the most like God spoke to you. Most, most like God can't even stand and look at you. Now the saints know that the most high is not listening to them. Because, you know, we can recognize you, your sin, your profanity, as soon as we look at you. Hey, most high God ain't speaking to him. This dude's got a bald head. He shaved every day. You just, he got a shiny face. You know, no fringes. And I'm talking about the most high God showed him a vision. <laughs> All right, John 931. Let's prove that. Dominic, read that. Now we know that God here considered. No, most of God don't listen to you. Come on. But if any man be a worshiper of God and do of his will, him he hears. Now, what was the will of God? What is the will of God? His laws. So, if you're not doing his laws, the things that he tell you to do, he don't. He don't. He listen to you. He has no. He, he has no communication to you. You are not spiritual. You worship the Most High God in spirit. In spirit according to the law. He listened to you in a spiritual sense. If you can't listen to, if you can't keep his commandments, you, you, not, you don't have a communication with the Most High God. All right. However, his congregation is famished of the law. Because their lying pastors doesn't teach them the law. Instead, he comes out of his thoughts about visions and dreams that he claims are from the Most High God. Let's get Jeremiah 23, 26. How long shall this be in the heart of the prophet that prophesy lies? Yea, they are prophets of the deceit of their own heart. We know this deceit will remain in the minds of these lying prophets and pastors forever. Here we are in the year 2020, and their deceit has gotten worse. When Congress passed a right for gays to get married, I was certain that the, the so-called black churches were rejected and not married gays in their church. The so-called top black church leaders co-signed gay marriage, gays adopting young Hebrew children. This proved that these lying pastors are no shepherds at all. Jeremiah 23, 27. Which they to cause my people to forget my day. By their dreams which they tell every man to his neighbor, as their fathers have forgotten forgotten my name for Baal. We have forgotten the Most High God's name by not keeping his laws, statutes, and commandments. You know, because the fact is, knowing a name and knowing what that name means, that's how you forget that name. You can know somebody's name, but you, if you don't know what that name means and know what that person stands for, You've forgotten that person's name. You can know his name for all you want. But what does he stand for? Those are the essence of, of what a name is. So the Most High God is going to tell you some. Let's get uh, Psalm 138 and 2. I will worship toward thy holy temple and praise thy name for thy loving kindness and for thy truth. For thou hast magnified thy word above all thy name. Loving kindness and thy truth for thy law. For, for, the law is the truth. 
So he magnified his word above all of his names. And he has a lot of names. But his word is above his name. So you understand his word is deserving of his name. You don't have to say his name. You can call him father. But you know who he is according to you. He's your father. Your heavenly father. The law represents the most high God. Let's continue on Jeremiah 23 and 32. Behold, I am against them that prophesy false dreams, saith the Lord. And do tell them, and cause my people to err by their lives and by their likeness. Yet I sent them not, nor commanded them. Therefore they shall not profit this people at all, saith the Lord. The messages from these lying pastors and prophets have not profited any of you, only them. He didn't send them, and it's not going to profit you. You know, all, all these lying testimonies and stuff, you know, people, you know, Getting up, giving testimonies about a job. That's that's not a, uh, you know, when you when you give a testimony about a job, a, a a a job. What about a business that that you work, you your own boss, that you are prospering, you you are, you are making hundreds of thousands a month. You just a small business, but you working for yourself, and you got a good product, and everybody's buying, and it's sustaining you and your family. You know, people giving testimony that they got a job working for, you know, they lost their job at Popeye's, but now they're working at churches. That's not a testimony. You just saying that you're a servant for another, for another master. All right. We're going to get, we're going to look at the destruction of Jerusalem because Jeremiah don't told them what the most high God is going to do to them. He's going to put, put Babylon in the midst of the city, of this healed city, hard to penetrate, to get into, but he's going to put the enemy right there in the middle. Let's see how he's going to do it. All right, let's talk about it. Here's the account of the destruction of Jerusalem by the Babylonians. Come on, Jer Jeremiah 52 and 1. Zedekiah was one and 20 years old when he began to reign, and he reigned 11 years in Jerusalem. And his mother's name was Hamital, the daughter of Jeremiah of Libana. Okay. Zedekiah reigned around 608 to 597 B.C. Because we know that the Jews were taken into captivity at 597. So you count 11 years back. And he started his reign 608. All right. Continue on verse 2. And he did that which was evil in the eyes of the Lord, according to all that Jehoiakim, Jehoiakim had done. Zedekiah was wicked. He did not care about the commandments of the Most High God. You know, he, he was supposed to be a keeper, you know, according to the law. He's supposed to have went to the Levites, got uh, got them to write a copy of the law, and he's supposed to be studying the law every day and command his people to do it. And making certain that the Levites were straight and doing the law too. But that, that wasn't that wasn't him. None, none of the kings were that way. King David was. Jordan, would you please? Jeremiah 23, 52 and 3, I meant. For through the anger of the Lord, it came to pass in Jerusalem and Judah till he had cast them out from his presence, and Zedekiah rebelled against the king of Babylon. It was the Most High God's plan that King Zedekiah rebelled against the king of Babylon, who the Most High used to cast the Jews out of his presence, out of the land that he gave them. Jer Jeremiah 52 and 4. And it came to pass in the ninth year of his reign, in the tenth month, in the tenth day of the month, that Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, came, he and all his army, against Jerusalem, and pitched against it, and built forts against it round about. Now, this was when they came to Jeremiah and asked him, asked him, you know, to, to, for, to have a word with the Most High God. And Jeremiah told him, you go tell Je Zedekiah this. They, now, they saw, this, this is what they saw. They saw Nebuchadnezzar right here. 
in the ninth year of Zedekiah's reign, around 599 BCE, Nebuchadnezzar and his men pitched camp around Jerusalem. Remember, Jerusalem is a walled city in the mountains. To defeat the Jews, you must overcome fighting an uphill battle because everything is uphill. You charge an uphill, you just can get mowed down. That that's that's a battle, you know, charging up a hill and you got a big wall and a gate, a, a thick gate that you can't get through because it's at a slant, you down on an incline, it that's a that's a that's a that's a lot to overcome. But the most high God was working on their side, he pulled his right moved his right hand away from 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 the Babylonians and put him against and, and start fighting with his right hand against the Jews. Let's see what he did. Jeremiah 52 and 5. So the city was besieged until the 11th year of Zedekiah. Okay. Babylon besieged Jerusalem for two years. Besieged. Let's, let's understand what besieged means. Dominic, read that. Besieged on the plains. Surrounded by armed forces. Able to capture it or force surrender. So this is what they did. They besieged. They, they surrounded this area. This, this area. Pitched forts. They put up forts and put up tents and everything around the whole city to 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 prevent what 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 were they preventing when they when they did this this plan here what were they preventing? It's not the flow of like people like coming out and like food. Yeah, come on, continue on because if you want to because you know it, it would have been a full attack. Fool, uh, it would be a fool errand to run your men up an incline hill and you had a disadvantage. Only thing they had to do was just drop boulders down and let it roll downhill and, and, and just topple y'all over. So what, what was their plan? What were they doing? Starting out the Israelites. Yeah, they were preventing food from coming in, preventing commerce. So, okay, we're going to see how much food they got. We're going to starve their butts out. Oh, that was one of the things. They, they're going to be starvation and pestilence. Okay. All right, let's, let's continue on. The Babylon prevented trade of goods to enter into the cities for two years. Let's give uh, Jeremiah 52 and 6. And in the fourth month, in the ninth day of the month, the famine was sore in the city, so that there was no bread for the people of that land. The Babylonians starved the Jews out, as prophesied by Jeremiah. Let's let's get that prophecy. Let's re, let's read re, re, read that. Dominic, read Jeremiah twenty one and nine. He that abideth for the city shall die by the sword and by the famine. By what? And by the famine. What famine mean? Wait. Man, I'm famished. What that mean? Absence of food. Yeah, starvation. Come on. And by the pestilence. Okay. But he that goes out and falleth to the Chaldeans that besiege you, he shall live, and his life shall be unto him for a prey. Those who stay in the city are dying by the famine. The sword is next. So the most the, 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 Jeremiah's prophet, the, the, what the most high God told Jeremiah to tell them, it's happening. They they starving now. They dying by by starvation. No food for over two years. People dropping dead like, like flies now. And the most like God told them, you got two. So, what does this mean? Them dying, what does this mean? Them dying by the famine, what does that mean? According to uh, Jeremiah 21 and 9. Did they listen? No. They didn't listen. What the hell with you? I'm staying in this city. I don't care what you say. He, he told him if you want to live, what he told him to do? Oh, leave the city? Yeah, surrender to the Chaldeans. All right, let's continue on Jeremiah 52 and 7. Then the city was broken up, and all the men of war fled, and went forth out of the city by night, by the way of the gate between the two walls, which was by the king's garden. Now the Chaldeans were by the city round about, and then went by the way of the plain. 
For the lack of food, the men opened the gates to the city and fled by night. There is something altogether wrong with this picture. The men abandoned the women and children and elderly, fleeing for their own lives. These are our leaders who have guided you into a pit. You must ask yourself this question of a leader. The decisions that he or she are making, will he or she stand with you in a time of trouble, or will they flee? All the ill decisions that King Zedekiah made when the prophet Jeremiah came telling him that the Most High God was planning to do if they didn't change, now all these leaders are fleeing their people. Now, these, see, it, 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 don't, it, it, it hadn't told you yet that King Zedekiah was one of the men that was fleeing, but in the next few precepts, you're going to come to understand he was one of those. <clears throat> all right. Come on, Jeremiah 52 and 8. But the army of the Chaldeans pursued after the king. Pursued after who? The king. That means King Zedekiah. Come on. The Lord overtook Zedekiah in the place of Jericho. And all his armies were scattered from him. All his armies was what? Scattered from him. Now, I'm going to tell you like this. I, I, I've, I've done this lesson. I've done this section before. This scripture is telling you a lot. But if your spirit is not in it, you ain't going to understand what it's te really telling you. Now, King Zedekiah, I'm going to tell you, I bet you he had a really, really nice horse. And his, and his men of war probably told King Zedekiah, hey, man, you know, uh, we, we trying to flee. So you can't, you, can't, you don't, don't pack heavy. Now, all his sons, the same way, they want to be princely and kingly regardless of whether they flee for their life or not. So what do you think they did? What do you think they did, Dominic? They brought a bunch of extra junk. They loaded their horses down with all that gold and silver, all the stuff that they that, that they think they needed to be a king. They should have put a few coins in their pocket and said, you know what, I can eat off of this for, for a few months and I'm good. You know, they probably had uh, uh, 20 talents of silver, and, and a talent of silver is like a, a lot of weight, 50 some pounds. You know, the, the the army was telling, "Hey man, you need to pack light, cause we trying to we trying to run." Now, they didn't catch none of the the, the army men, or none of his men. They caught, but they caught Zedekiah. Read that again. But the army of the Chaldeans pursued after the king and overtook Zedekiah in the plains of Jericho, and all his army was scattered from him. The, the, I'm going to tell you, the men of war, they was light. And them horses, and eight ears were pointed back, and them men were down on that, on that horse. They were gone. They were like, man, y'all ain't kept, see ya. <laughs> you know, we'll see you in Jericho. If, if you can find us, them horses were gone. Because, you know, those are soldiers. You know, they understand the, 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 the they understand what, how, what, you, what you need to flee. And he probably told the king, hey, hey king, uh, you don't need to take all this stuff, man. We trying to get away. You know, we starving. We trying to we trying to run. We ain't got no we ain't got no energy to fight. You need to put this, some of this stuff back. Well, we ain't stopping. I'm gonna let you know. We're not stopping. We fleeing for our life. Zedekiah was one of the men that fled. Of course, he tried to flee way down with silver, gold, and jewels. The Chaldeans caught up to him. He probably would have, he probably would have escaped if he had loosened the excess weight. Zedekiah's army knew they were fleeing. They knew that they had a better chance of escaping if they rode without extra weight. They probably told Zedekiah, but he didn't listen. Let's continue on Jeremiah 52 and 9. Then they took the king and carried him up unto the king of Babylon, the Ribla, in the land of Hamid. Where he gave judgment upon him. The Chaldeans took the king and his sons to see the king of Babylon for judgment. If you don't want to do what the Most High God command you, Hebrews, to do, then he places our enemies over us and they harshly judge us. This is happening every day. Y'all don't want to do what the Most High God tell you to do, but then you go in these, these white folk courthouses and they harshly judge you. They don't judge their people like they judge you. They harshly judge you. You know, the same crime, you know, crack cocaine, 
Automatic five years. But white man get out with probation. Harshly judges you. They make laws to harshly judge you. This is the will of the Most High God because he's taking his peace, his loving kindness, and his mercy from you. Y'all need to understand that. If you don't want to do what he tell you to do, he ain't got no love for you. He ain't got no peace for you. He ain't got no loving kindness for you. So, we're seeing this. This is what they did. They took Zedekiah to see the king of Babylon. Since you don't want to do the most high God tell you, we're going to take you to your enemy and he's going to judge you. All right, let's see what he called, what he did. Let's let's get Jeremiah 52 and 10. And the king of Babylon slew the sons of Zedekiah before his eyes. He slew also the princes of Judah and Rimla. So these are the men that tried to escape and all of them tried to escape with, with all kinds of stuff. And they got caught. The army was gone. The most I took, told Zedekiah what would happen to him through the prophet Jeremiah. He didn't repent. Neither did he listen. Let's get that proof. Jer Jeremiah 21 and 7. Afterward, afterward, said the Lord, I will deliver Zedekiah, king of Judah, and his servants, and the people, and such as are left in the city from the pestilence, from the sword. And from the famine, famine, into the head of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, and into the head of their enemies, and into the head of those that seek their life. He shall smite them with the edge of the sword. He shall not spare them, neither have pity, nor have mercy. He, because that, this is the will of the Most High. He told him he took his loving kindness and mercy from you. So he sent you to your enemy since you didn't want to do what he told you to do. And he... And he he slew all of Zedekiah's sons before in his presence. Let's see what else he did to Zedekiah afterwards. Jeremiah 52 and 11. Then he put out the eyes of Zedekiah, and the king of Babylon bound him in, the cha in chains, and carried him to Babylon, and put him in prison till the day of his death. Zedekiah realized the wrath of his Elohim when he had no eyes. His sons were killed before him, and he was unable to mourn them, and he was rotting away in that prison. The Most High can take all of what you think is important away from you in an instant. You know, y'all need to come to the real realization of this. Why you? Why you on top? Why you ahead? You need to take heed and keep the commandments of the Most High God, because you know what? He can flip that on you in in, in an instant. Where you flying high and you think you everything, you think you this and think you that. Next thing you know, you, you ain't got nothing. You're homeless in the street and you got some, some a death in the disease. Jeremiah 52 and 12. Now the fifth month, the tenth day of the month, which was the nineteenth year of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, came Nebuchadnezzar, captain of the guard, which served the king of Babylon. Into Jerusalem. Maybe Zardon, the captain of the guard who served the king of Babylon, arrived into Jerusalem at his, at his day and hour. Let's see what he did. Because the Most High God told Jeremiah that he was going to do a lot of stuff. Let's see what Nebuchadnezzar Zardon did. Now, he don't kill king, uh, he don't kill all, all uh the prince and all this uh, the uh the prince and, and, and princes of Zu, Judah and the, uh, the king's sons. All right, let's continue. On. He he don't did that, so that's one strike off off the off the mat. Let's see what he did. Uh, Jeremiah fifty two and thirteen. And burned the house of the Lord and the king's house, and all the houses of Jerusalem, and all the houses of the great men. Burned he with fire. Nebuzaradan was charged with destroying the city, burning even the house of the Most High. Remember, the Most High God's presence was gone from the Jews. Jeremiah took the tabernacle and the Ark of the Covenant into Mount Nebo and hid them. He burned the seat of the Jews' power. All right, continue on. Jeremiah 52 and 14. And all the army of the Chaldeans that were with the captain of the guard break down all the walls of the Jerusalem around the belt. Now, I'm going to tell you, see, you got to understand, you don't camp out in this area for over two years. Will you be a little mad 
when you finally overtake the city, they say, you know what? This wall got to go. We can't, we can't leave these walls here because, man, it took us two years to get in this damn place. This wall kept us out. The Chaldeans destroyed the walls that were around the city that kept Babylonians out until they starved the Jews out. <clears throat> this is what our enemies do today. Anything that represents power for the Hebrews, our enemies quickly destroy. Let's get, let's get some history. The history of the FBI's secret enemies list. I got a source. Uh, it's a uh, HTTPS colon four slash four slash www.npr.org four slash twenty twelve four slash zero two slash fourteen slash one four six eight six two oh eight one and you can uh, four slash d dash history dash of that's d dash fbis dash secret secret dash, dash enemies dash list let's let's see what let's see what this is saying i, I didn't i'm, I'm a, just i'll put the uh the source will remain on on this lesson so you guys can can uh can view it all right read that Hoover saw the civil rights movement from the 1950s, 50s onward, and the anti-war movement from the 1960s onward, as presenting the greatest threats to the stability of the American government since the Civil War. He says, these people were enemies of the state, and in particular, Martin Luther King was an enemy of the state, and Hoover aimed to watch over them. If they twitched in the wrong direction, the hammer would come down. Anything that represents a power base for the Hebrews, so-called blacks, Hispanic, and Native Americans, dispersed everywhere, our enemies would come and destroy immediately. It's the will of the Elohim of it's the will of Elohim of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, because we refuse to keep his covenant. That that's the most high God's will. He has removed his loving kindness, his peace, and his mercy. You still don't want to do what he tells you to do. And all these other means that you're trying to do, you know, I have a dream and all this other stuff, and you're not keeping any of his commandments, none of them. You, you, you're profane, you're eating abominable things, you're unclean, and then you and then you think that you're gonna things are gonna work out your way. You can listen to all of these, you know, pan-Africanism, you can listen to all the Egyptologies and all this other stuff. They might be sound as, uh, making sense of things that, that they're they're talking about. But that's not your God. That's not your Elohim. You're still confused about who you are. Jordan, would you please stop that? All right, let's continue on. Jeremiah 52, 15. Then Nebuchadnezzar, the captain... Let me read that again. That's then Nebuchadnezzar, the captain of the guard, carried away captive, certain of the poor of the people. In the residue of the people that remained in the city, and those that fell away, that fell to the king of Babylon, and the rest of the multitude. Nebuzaradan began carrying the Jews away as slaves. Continue on, verse 17. Also, the pillars of brass that were in the house of the Lord, and the bases, and the brass, and the brass and sea that was in the house of the Lord, the Chaldeans break and carried all the brass of them to Babylon. The Chaldeans took the brass out of the house of the Most High, taking it to Babylon. Our enemies are flossing with all of our gold, silver, diamond, and brass today. Now, I didn't leave. Uh, I, I didn't mention everything that they took out of the house of the Most High God because all the things that King Solomon had 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 uh, the men uh, designed in the house of the Most High God, they destroyed and took all of that stuff out of out of out of the house of the Most High and took it with them. All right, verse 24. And the captain of the guard took Sarariah, the chief priest, and Zephaniah, the second priest, and the three keepers of the door. Nebuchadnezzar took the leaders in the temple. Come on. Verse 25. He took also out of the city in a eunuch, which had the charge of the men of war, and the seven men of them that were near the king's person which were found in the city, and a principal scribe of the host, 
who mustered the people of the land, and threescore men of the people of the land that were found in the midst of the city. Nebuchadnezzar also took the eunuch in charge of the army, seven men in charge of the king's house, and sixty other leaders in the, in the land. Verse 26. So Nebuzardan, the captain of the guard, took them and brought them to the king of Babylon, to Ribla. Nebuzardan took them, took these men to Ribla, brought them before the king of Babylon. Verse 27. And the king of Babylon smote them and put them to the and put them to death in Ribla, in the land of Hamah. Thus Judah was, was carried away, captive out of his own land. So what the most guy say that he took away his loving kindness, his peace, and his mercy. This is what happens when he does that. He ain't got no mercy for you. So when you find yourself falling in the street and just killed by your enemy, and he gets off for free, because your God has taken away his peace, his loving kindness, and his mercy. He ain't got no mercy for you because you don't love him and he don't need to love you. He has no need to love you. The king had all of these men killed. This is no coincidence that the leaders among us were killed. This is the will of the Most High God. Killing these men possibly could give the nation of Israel a chance to repent. A chance to repent. Not a change. All right. Instructions. From the, from the Most High. When he made us captives in Babylon. When he made us captive in Babylon. He, he had. Now he had no mercy for us. Because he did everything he said he was going to do to us. Killed all the leaders. Killed, uh, killed uh, all of the, the followers of. of, of uh, killed all the followers of uh, uh, the king. His house. He did everything he said he was going to do. Now let's see what he instructed us to do after we were enslaved. Jeremiah 29 and 1. These instructions still stand today. Come on. Now these are the words of the letter that Jeremiah the prophet sent from Jerusalem into the residue of the elders which were carried away captives and to the priests and to the prophets and to all the people whom Nebuchadnezzar had carried away captive from Jerusalem to Babylon. Jeremiah the prophet wrote a letter to the residue of the Jews who were carried away as slaves. This included the priests, prophets, and all the people. All right, verse 4. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, unto all that are carried away captives, whom I have caused to be carried away from Jerusalem unto Babylon. Thus saith the Most High God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, who carried us away as slaves for breaking his covenant. Verse 5, come on. Build ye houses, and dwell in them, and plant gardens, and eat the fruit of them. The Most High told us Hebrews to build us houses, not rely on our enemies to provide them. He told us to plant our own crops, knowing that our enemies would give us defiled food. All right, read Ezekiel. 4 and 13. And the Lord said, Even thus shall the children of Israel eat their defiled bread among the Gentiles, whither I will drive them. Yeah, the Most High knew we would not listen to his instructions. We never do. This is why we are sitting in positions we are. Because now, it's up to the it's up to the so-called white man and all his cohorts to even decide if he want to feed us now. That's why we got all these food deserts in our community right now, because the Most High God told us to build our own houses, to plant our own gardens. And no, we don't want to do that. All right, Jeremiah twenty nine and six. Take ye wives and beget sons and daughters. And take wives for your sons, and give your daughters to husband, that they may bear sons and daughters, that ye may be increased there, and not diminished. The Most High didn't instruct us to start marrying those who have us in captivity. He instructed us to marry among ourselves, that we may be increased in the land. 
We're not following his instructions. Verse 7. And seek the peace of the city. Seek do what? And seek the peace of the city, whether I have caused you to be carried away captive, and pray unto the Lord for it. For in the peace thereof shall ye have peace. He told us to obey the law of those who have us in captivity and pray to the Most High God for peace. That he give us peace back. If you do, if you do, you will have peace. The reason we so-called blacks and Hispanics don't have peace is, one, we don't obey the law in our communities, and two, we don't know our Elohim. We don't know the instructions that he told us to do. That was that captivity that applies to the captivity today. You build, you, because the Most High God knows what's best for us. Build your houses. Plant your own food. Marry your daughters and sons to other Hebrews. Amongst yourself. Jeremiah 28, 29 and 8. For thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, let not your prophets and your diviners that be in the midst of you deceive you. Neither hearken to your dreams, which ye cause to be dreams. Now, all of the hell that you have gone through, don't let these damn lying prophets deceive you again. That's what should be what some of y'all should be saying today. Like, oh man, you, these pastors, man, they, we don't went through crack, we don't went through AIDS, we don't went through this, and we don't went through that, and they still lying to us. You know, send another, send another bunch of junk. And we still dro dropping for it. You know, sometimes I'll be like, man, Christianity, that, that, that is some like, ooh, some serious voodoo. People don't know when to get out of it. Don't be deceived by these lying pastors, prophets, and diviners among us. If they're not teaching the will of the Father, which is his laws, as Christ taught. Let's get Matthew 6 and 9. I'm going to read that in 6 and 10. After this manner, therefore, pray ye, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. This is how Christ instructed the Jews to pray. You notice Christ is saying, our Father's name is too holy to say. Continue on verse 10. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. The kingdom that is coming, the law, the will of the Most High will be done in earth as it is in heaven. So if your pastors and uh, your pastors, priests and prophets or whatever they call themselves, if they're not teaching you the will, the laws of the Father, you're being deceived. They're liars. Jeremiah 29 and 9. For they prophesy falsely unto you in my name. I have not sent them, saith the Lord. The Most High have not sent these pastors, prophets, and bishops, but the devil sent them to deceive you. All right. Number seven. See, this is the time when the Most High God got up out of, out of, out of uh, our hair because at this time the Ark of the Covenant was still amongst us and he can see all the wickedness that we were doing. So... Number seven, what happened to the Ark of the Covenant? Let's get that information. The Ark of the Covenant was still with the Jews in Jerusalem before the Babylonians took the Jews captive. What happened to it? Let's get 2 Maccabees 2 and 1. It is also found in the records that Jeremiah the prophet commanded them that were carried away to take off the fire as it hath been signified. Jeremiah the prophet commanded the Levites that were being taken away as slaves to Babylon to take the fire that burned in the temple. All right, continue on, verse 2. And how that the prophet, having given them the law, charged them not to forget the commandments of the Lord, and that they should not err in their minds when they see images of silver and gold with their ornaments. Jeremiah instructed the prophets to remember the commandments of the Most High and not to let their thoughts get taken over by silver and gold or money. Guess what? They didn't listen. Our prophets and pastors today are easily persuaded. They fold like cheap suits. 
You show them a few dollars, they, you know, you can get what you want to out of them. They would accept any defiled thing. That's, that's, that's what the government did. And all these prophets now, all these pastors and stuff are, are, are accepting gay marriage like it's nothing. Because cause, cause they following the government instead of the Most High God. The book that they, they're uh, sworn to protect and abide by. All right? Second Maccabees 2 and 3. And with other such speeches exhorted he there that the law should not depart from their hearts. He told them that the law should not leave their minds. Verse 4. It was also contained in the same writing that the prophet being warned of God commanded the tabernacle and the ark to go with him as he went forth into the mountain where Moses climbed up and saw the heritage of God. As commanded by the Most High, Jeremiah took the tabernacle and the ark of the covenant into Mount Nebo. Let's get that precept. Dominic, read Deuteronomy 34 and 1. And Moses went up from the plains of Moab unto the mount of Nebo to the top of this God. This God. That is over against Jericho. And the Lord showed him all the land of Gilead but the dead. Jeremiah went up into the same mountain range with the Ark of the Covenant and the Tabernacle of the Most High God. Alright, verse 5. Uh, 2 Maccabees 2 and 5. And when Jeremiah came thither, he found a hollow cave, wherein he laid the tabernacle and the ark and the altar of incense, and so stopped the door. Jeremiah found a cave in the mountain, placed the tabernacle, and ark of the covenant didn't cause the cave in. He stopped the door in, the, in this cave that he, he found. It must have been a little small small cave. So he caused, he caused the cave in to uh, enclose those items. All right. You know, because the fact is, you know, they saying that uh, the Ark of the Covenant is in Ethiopia or somewhere. That's not true. All right. Jeremiah 2 and 6. And some of those that followed him came to mark the way, but they could not find it. People followed Jeremiah to locate where he placed the items, but they couldn't find them. All right. Verse 7. Second Maccabees 2 and 7. Which then, which when Jeremiah perceived, he blamed them, saying, As for that place, it shall be unknown until the time that God gathered his people again together and received them unto mercy. He told them that these items would be found when the Most High returned to mercy unto Israel. So, that means the Most High God has, all, has taken his mercy, his loving kindness, and his peace away from his people right now, but he will return to mercy. Dominic, read Isaiah 14 and 1, please. For the Lord will have mercy on Jacob, and will yet choose Israel, and set them in their own land. The stranger shall be joined with them, and they shall cleave to the house of Jacob. What I have learned from the prophet Jeremiah, and what the Most High commanded him to tell us, three things, should, three things stood out. And they are same identical transgressions against the Most High that has us at the bottom of society. First, we must stop cheating on the Most High with Islam, white Jesus, Christianity, Egyptology, politics, etc. Second, we must change how we behave toward one another in our communities. Stop selling drugs that destroy your people. Stop prostituting our young girls and women and young boys and young men. Stop oppressing the fatherless forcing them to do things that they don't want to do or shouldn't do. Third, we must stop trusting these lying pastors. These are the reasons why the new, new Babylon is so strong against us today. They are not teaching the laws of the Most High and causing their congregation to rejoice straight into hell. The same thing that the prophets were dealing with Yesterday hadn't changed. Same thing the most I got told him to tell us back then, it still hadn't changed. And the judgments that he gave us, gave gave them, and what he told Jeremiah, uh, Jeremiah 16 and, and 7 or 16 and 5, that I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, don't mourn for them. Don't go, don't go lament for them. He telling the prophet, no, don't go to their funeral. 
When I kill them, don't go to their funeral. Because I have removed my peace. I have removed my loving kindness. And I have removed my mercy. Y'all need to understand that. So, when the Most High God killing you, he, he, he ain't got no love for you. He ain't got no peace for you. And he ain't got no mercy. Why you think the hood is so jacked up? There ain't no mercy in the hood. In the hood. Your brother kill you with, without mercy. That's from the Lord. Because y'all y'all need to understand who who your God is. That's part of understanding who He is. You got to believe in His word. You got to you got to try to do His will, and every day get stronger. You know, I'm not telling you that you know you quit, you know, cold turkey today, and and you're going to be per perfect. No. You immerse yourself in his word. Understand what it is he wants you to do. And gradually change your ways. There's a lot of things you can stop right then. When you understand the, law, the dietary law. Oh, I was supposed to eat pork. Okay, no more pork. No more, no more shellfish. It ain't like you got a habit to eat it. <laughs> okay, I ain't got to eat it. That's off the menu. Anyway, this is, uh, again, this is Prophets of Israel 12. It's a two-part series, uh, Jeremiah uh, part two. Uh, Jeremiah was a two-part series because it's, you know, it is a environment within itself. You know, it goes from what the Most High God gave us a chance when he said that he was, uh, if we changed our ways, He'll be peaceful, and, and, and it still is today. If I guarantee you, if we change our ways today in the community, in our communities, start keeping the commandments, stop oppressing our our, our uh, fellow uh, Hebrews, stop stop doing the things that the Most High God has a problem with, and we start uh, uh, cleaning ourselves up, eating the right kind of the foods and stuff like that, and stop profaning ourselves, you know. Men look like men and women look like women. Follow the law. But first, you got to have someone to teach you the law. If the if a lying pastor is not teaching you the will of God, no, if a pastor is not teaching you the will of the Most High God, which is the law, then he is a lying pastor. Anyway. Hope you guys got something out of this. Uh, again, I give a shout out to my 25,800 and, and some, 846, maybe more now, uh, Facebook followers, and also my YouTube subscribers. I don't do much on you, YouTube, 862. 25,862 Facebook followers and also my YouTube subscribers. I don't do much on uh, on YouTube but upload my lessons but if you want to go to YouTube uh, my YouTube page is live L-I-V-E Shabbat S-H-A-B-B-A-T class C-L-A-S-S -S. my Facebook page is at sign Live, L-I-V-E, Shabbat, S-H-A-B-B-A-T, class, C-L-A-S-S, -S, all one word. Feel free to like, subscribe, follow. Uh, if you want to follow me on my on my Facebook page, just just hit the uh, follow a button on my page and the like button, and you will receive all of my classes from, uh, from this forward, and you will have access to all of my previous classes you know, feel free to like them. Uh, you know, leave a comment. If you have a question, feel free to ask a question. Now, if you bring in your Christianity, white Jesus uh, doctrine to my page, or you bring in that Arab Islam doctrine to my page, please don't bring that to my page. I'm trying to, you know, free you from slavery. I I'm not trying to keep you a slave. You know, because those doctrines were given to you by your former slave masters. The Arabs have, have, have us uh, in slavery for the over past 1400 years and they still have a lot of Hebrews in slavery today in their, in their country. 
you know, the slavery in Libya. That's 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 the Arabs. And that's the doctrine that you guys are following. I'll continue to say this every day, every you know, weekly. Your captors, the captors, and the ones that are being captured can't have the same God. Because one of y'all, you know, you're gonna pray for something to be free, and you want to pray for that 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 your your captor to get his foot off your neck. And the, the, the one that got his foot on your neck is going to pray to keep his foot on your neck. You can't be praying to the same God. Cause, and it's, it's for instance, that's not your God. So he ain't going to answer you. He's going to answer the one that got his foot on the neck. Think about it. But anyway, uh, hope you guys got some out of this family and friends. And with that, I like to say shalom. Shalom.